In this video, I'll be covering five beginner compression engine tips. So these are five things that I learned doing my first engine build. We're talking uncompressed area versus compressed area. You guys know what it is. Let's jump into the five tips. Number one, you have to measure everything. Don't take it for granted. This small block, 74 small block, is supposed to be 8.4 compression. Once I got in and started measuring everything, it was actually at 7.6, so pretty abysmal. And I never would have known that if I hadn't measured it, and it definitely impacts the choices that you make when building your engine. There's lots of calculators out there, but when you take the time and build your own spreadsheet, it allows you to do different comparisons side by side and look at the impact of small changes. Number two, come over here and take a look at my deck. <laughs> nice big deck on our V8 and <laughs> True deck height is, you know, from crank to top here. What we're really concerned about is deck clearance. So what's the clearance from the top of the piston to the deck? Actually, my deck was really crooked. I... <laughs> All right, enough deck jokes. This is one of the factors why my compression was so bad on this engine was actually the deck was crooked. The deck was skewed. So this was actually 30 thousandths off of square from front to back. You've heard of zero decking. So zero decking means that your top of your piston is equal to the deck. Milling the deck, great way to get compression, but the watch out is if you mill too far, you can start to run into a fitment issue with your intake. So watch out there. But I was able to take 30 thousandths off of this and really just square it up nicely. That brings us to number three. On your piston, there's two things to think about. One of them is the compression height, or it's basically the pin height from the top to the center of the pin. Shorter piston will give you more clearance. Taller piston gives you less clearance. If you're buying pistons, big opportunity to impact your compression by choosing the one with the right total height. The other thing to look at is your dish, the recessed volume in the piston. There's also dome pistons, which are basically negative. They take up space above the piston. These are really easy to measure. These flat top pistons are really easy to measure. You throw, you can basically just throw a ruler on it and get a pretty good measurement and then measure the depth of it. Or you can measure it the same way that you would measure the head, which is you basically take a piece of plexi that you attach to it and then you drill a little hole and you fill it up with the liquid and you measure the volume of that liquid. Gaskets, don't take gaskets for granted. Gaskets can make a big impact. It's all uh, cylinders, so pi r squared h when you're doing your calculations. The difference between these two gaskets, for me it's an 8.17 compression, or with this thin gasket, this brings me up to 8.54. So pretty decent difference. Good way to fine tune. You don't want to be too low, you know, leaving power on the table, leaving efficiency on the table. You don't want to be too high because that has a whole host of other issues. Head is probably the biggest impactor of, you know, volume when we're looking at compression. These are 71 cc heads. So as you're doing your side-by-side -side calculation, planning ahead, this is one area where you look at where are you now and where you want to be in the long term. So I've already kind of specced out that at some point down the road, I do want to upgrade this. I'll probably upgrade this to a 63 cc head and that brings my compression right up to the 9.2-ish. So about, you know, top end of where you can run on pump gas or where you can run on 87 octane. One other fun thing to think about is stroker engine. So kind of a, we already did the five, so this one's a bonus. If you're changing the stroke or the bore, you start changing those, that also starts bringing your compression up. So these are basics, beginner tips. You're not born knowing this stuff. So this is stuff that I kind of had to figure out. Hopefully you guys find this useful. Now there's a lot deeper that we can dig into stuff. We can start talking about dynamic compression, thermal efficiency, pre-ignition, how much compression you can run for different fuel levels. It gets pretty deep. So drop a comment. Let me know if you guys want to do that. These were the basic items. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button, leave me a comment, make sure you're subscribed and check out one of these other videos here for more Duster Bus content.